Most YouTube videos will not change your life. This one can. I took a happiness test and apparently I am a happiness expert. That seems believable and you can probably tell by my videos that I am a pretty happy guy. In this video, we're gonna discuss seven ways to be happy from the website Pursuit of Happiness. The website is linked in the description. Positive mindset. This is the most important way to be happy by far because this section allows you to enjoy the other six things. The positive mindset is mindfulness, gratitude, and positive thinking. Mindfulness, you already know that I preach about a lot. Mindfulness is what is gained through meditation. Imagine meditation being the gym workout, the, the bicep curls, and mindfulness is the gains, the bicep muscle that is made from it. The more you meditate, the more mindful you become. And mindfulness, just, if you did any bit of research on it, you'd be amazed at the amount of benefits that it has. Like, I wouldn't even be able to cover it. You probably have heard of them already. And most likely, you either already meditate and you're like, oh my God, Hamza is so amazing because he, he got me onto meditation. Or you're like, oh, meditation doesn't even work. I don't even know how to meditate. If you're part of this group of dumbasses, I made a Skillshare class. It's like 25 minutes long of me step-by-step -step explaining in a very, very understandable way how to meditate. It's literally a four-step process that I've never seen anyone discuss before because everyone seems to they all seem to complicate it so much i explained it in a very easy to understand way the skillshare link to learn how to meditate is in the description scroll down right now and just watch the class it's 25 minutes you can watch it for free another part of the positive mindset is gratitude this is something i preach to all my boys you can level up your gratitude through different ways but i believe one of the best ways is just simple gratitude journaling just bullet pointing things that you're grateful for here's a couple pages of mine you can also send a letter of gratitude. This is a little bit harder to do. It feels a little bit uncomfortable and cringy. Pretty much you just write a letter. You don't even really need to send it to the person. You just write a letter to someone saying that you're grateful for them being in your life. Expressing gratitude to someone is definitely a way that just instantly makes you happy. So here is an actionable step I want everyone to do right now. Grab your phone or if you're already on it, get ready. I want you to send a message of gratitude to someone on your contact list. Literally just send them the simple message. I'm grateful for you, name, mum, dad, Stephen, Jeffrey, Adonis. I'm grateful for you, Adonis, because and write like one little sentence. Send them this message right now. I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to literally write a message on my computer, my MacBook here. Who should I send it to? Let's send it to my boy, Bu. There. I've just sent my messages. I wrote, Bu, that's his name, Bu, I'm grateful for you, man. Thank you for the success motivation you gave, you've given me over the past two years. I hope that you followed along to the actionable step because there's gonna be more coming up. Send that message right now. It's supposed to feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to feel cringy. Just send the message to someone and you're gonna find that it was such an easy way to be happy. And you also make the person who you send the message to happier. I want every single person right now Go off the video, send this message, and then come back to me. Now, the final part of the positive mindset is positive thinking. That literally just means optimism. There is a book that I want everyone to read called The Magic of Thinking Big. You can find a free PDF of it online. I really suggest just buying the book. It induces that positive thinking mindset into you, and straight away, so many young guys, they don't value that. All you mother are ready to click to the next part of this video because you're like oh positive thinking optimism like it's not practical just tell me how many reps i should do of bench press shut up bro just trust me this is so much more important than m the majority of the stuff you do because it allows you to do most of the stuff this positive thinking will overlap over every other pursuit you have if you want to get jacked if you want to get girls if you want to be more social and have more friends you want to make more business money the positive thinking is going to help you to do all of that i highly suggest this book in general you've got to think of your thinking your thoughts as a skill and most of us have pretty much been leveling up the skill of negative thinking so we're a high level in that skill and those thoughts occupy most of our brain so you want more positive thinking you've got to level up that skill and you have to kind of purposely forcefully say positive words in your mind like no i, I failed but you know what i'm gonna get it next time i'm so excited for that workout i'm gonna smash it i smashed that workout you've got to say these words in your mind because if you don't your mind will just automatically go backwards to the negative thinking and who wants that who wants negative thoughts in your mind? It's, it's fucking horrible. Magic of Thinking Big is a, such an amazing book for it. Highly suggest you go and read it. I'll put a link to the book in the description. You can scroll down right now and buy it. I highly suggest that you do that. The second way to be happy is with relationships. I've said many times in my videos that relationships are probably the most fulfilling part of life. Fix things with your family. A lot of you dumbasses are holding on to hate because of shit that happened like five years ago. If you fix things with your family, I know it seems incredibly uncomfortable. 
if you do that, it's so amazing the transformation you go through when you actually feel like you've got a good relationship with your family. And I want that for everyone watching this. Apologize to the people you've hurt. If you've ever bullied someone, go and send them that message. Go and apologize, send them, send them the voice note and just saying you're sorry, I've done that. I'll include a little video of me where I sent a voice note to some guy who like I insulted. And I just, you know, I apologized and I felt better. He actually thanked me for it. Yo, Callum. Man, it took me a while to mature and realise that my behaviour towards you was kind of shit. But I remember being in high school and I called you broke. And I don't know why the f I said that shit, man. I was a little shit in high school and shit. So I hope you can accept my apologies. I hope you're doing good in life. I remember that we were like real good friends and it's a shame that we have like no contact now. And obviously that's 100% my fault. So yeah, I hope you're doing good. I hope you've stayed safe with your family and you're doing good in life. There you go. I, I felt happier after that and he probably did too. The experiences that make life worth living are always when you're joined with someone else, with someone you love, with some friends, with some family. All the studies you can find online, I'm not gonna link any, just go find them if you want. <laughs> all the studies you can find always consistently show that the happiest people are those who have got a vibrant social circle. So how do you get that? Because you're lonely right now, so how do you actually go about and you know making new friends, getting new relationships? The most important factor to this is social skills. Social skills, skill. It is a skill. So how long have you spent leveling up this skill in the past month? Zero hours. Don't lie to me. Zero hours. I'd say pretty much everyone watching this video, apart from one or two people, have spent zero hours leveling up their social skills. That is why you're lonely and you don't have many relationships, is because, quite frankly, you're not good with people and you can be good with people. You need the same mindset that you have about weightlifting and packing on muscle and body transformation with social skills. It is literally just something that you need to go and practice and train. But first of all, imagine the guy who literally hasn't learned anything about weightlifting and he goes to the gym. Will he make progress? Yeah, but will it be ideal? Absolutely not. Then imagine the guy who, whilst he goes to the gym, does a lot of learning in his own time. He researches it. He's gonna make a lot better progress. That is exactly what you need to do. Research how to improve your social skills, but don't learn about it on, on read it because none of them are really good at social skills the the book the go-to book is how to win friends and influence people you've seen this book recommended so many times there is a fantastic reason for it because it is literally just this one book that you need that will enable you to have beautiful relationships i can't believe people don't read this book for whatever reason just read this one book and your relationships, your social skills for the rest of your life will be at least 20% better. And if you constantly keep reading this book, keep learning from it, it'd be even better than that. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's another thing that I made a Skillshare class on. So if you don't really like reading, you don't wanna read, I made a class on all 30 principles. The class is like an hour long of content of me going over every single principle, explaining it how he explains it, and then giving practical advice on how you can use it right now to improve your social skills. It's a very practical class that I've made. The Skillshare link for this How To Win Friends class is in the description. Scroll down right now, go and watch the class. It's another thing that you can just watch with the free trial, so you don't even need to pay any money to watch it. The friendships you have before you've read a book like How To Win Friends and Influence People, before you've leveled up your social skills, are so sub-tier, sub optimal compared to the ones that you will get when you have leveled up your social skills. So it's so, so important that if you wanna meet better people around you, you go and improve your social skills because that is the value that people want. I want you to think of relationships very, very similar to the market in selling in business. Literally, no one gives a f that you've got some money goal. Stop talking about your goal with your business in terms of money. Stop talking about your goal with, oh, I'm lonely, I want friends. No one cares. What can you provide to other people? What value can you give to society? What value can you give to some random person? Why should someone want to be friends with you? And if you're stuttering and you're like, oh, uh, because, um, um, fail. People want to be friends with people who follow the principles of how to win friends and influence people. This book will make you a fantastic listener and that is probably the, the most valuable thing that you could want in a friend. And you might think, oh, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good listener. No, you're not. Most people are terrible listeners because it's something that they've never even researched. Like it's the age of the internet. There's no excuses now. Have you ever researched how to be a better listener? Don't lie. Have you done that? Probably not. 
A book like this will teach you. Highly recommend you start improving your social skills if you want more happiness from relationships. The third way to be happy is with kindness. Now on this website, they had a fantastic phrase, which was intrinsically motivated kindness. That is something that I don't really see many people have. Okay, kindness refers to doing you know, generous things, especially for people who can't really give you anything back. Most young people have done a bit of volunteering, but it's not intrinsically motivated. It was motivated for an external reason reason. They didn't want to go and help the homeless or help the old people. It's just that they wanted a better CV and they kind of convinced themselves, oh, and I'll be helping people. But they mainly just wanted the CV for the job applications that they eventually will be sending out. That's not bad. It has some benefits, but it's not the best. What you want is to be purposely helping people because you know that it makes society better around you, that there's real human beings around you. They've got their entire life story. They've got their own pains and problems and, and loves and fears. And you could be a beautiful part of their life for however long you are in it. You could be a helping, generous part of that. That is truly powerful. And after that experience is gone, after the trials and tribulations, the efforts and the cost of you helping someone, all you have left is the memory. And that memory is so profitable. The return on investment of being kind is one of the best that you'll ever get in your life. Fuck compound interest and ISAs and stocks and shit. You know, you're aiming for 10% interest of your money. Go and help someone. When you go and help someone, whether with your money or whether with your own effort and your own time, your own mental power, that will give you a far better return and it also helps someone else. So there's a few ways that I personally do this. Every month I coach a couple of guys for free. So I really value my time. I sell my time pretty expensively, but every single month I end up coaching a about two to three guys for free that we just do video calls. They tell me their life story. They tell me everything that they're struggling with. I give them the best advice possible and we see them make significant progress in their mental health and their self-improvements. When I order takeout food for the last couple of months, I've been tipping the delivery person about five pounds, which is pretty significant because in the UK, we don't really tip like at all. And so five pounds is about 25% of the, the whole cost, which to be honest, I've never done before. And I always feel a little bit hesitant because I'm like, oh, you know, the meal was 17 pounds, now it's gonna be 23, it's a big jump. But then I'm like, you know what? The extra five pounds in my bank account is not, it's not really gonna be, you know, what the fuck? I'm not even gonna know if I had the five pounds or didn't. Do you know what I mean? But I know for a fact that when the person who delivered the food to me gets the notification that they've literally just been tipped five pounds, which I'm assuming is probably about half an hour of their wage, that they've literally just been given half an hour of time, they're gonna be smiling about it. They're gonna be happy and that makes me happy. Finally, another thing I do is I accept emails from everyone and I write detailed life plans, you know, pieces of advice for anyone who emails me. Here's my email. Send me your life story. Tell me all about the problems you've got. I, I sit around for like 20 minutes. I even journal for some of them really, really thinking, okay, how can this person transform his life right now? Again, I sell self-improvement coaching, but this is like the stuff that I'm, I'm happy for a reason. And that's why it's because I do stuff like this. I am so like my base state is happiness. My base state is the smile because of stuff like this, because when I do this stuff, Every now and then I get an email from someone saying, oh, it worked, you've, you've saved my life, you've changed my life, thank you so much, I've got this and I've got this because of the plan that you wrote me. Same thing with the coaching. Take some time right now and think, how could you be more generous and kind to the people around you? It's definitely worth doing. The fourth way to be happy is with physical health. And this is something that I talk a lot about on my channel. Now, physical health has four parts that we're gonna discuss. Exercise, sunlight, nutrition, and sleep. Let's start with exercise. You have to be doing some form of exercise pretty much every single day. Don't believe the shit that you see on Reddit. Uh, uh, make sure you only work out three to four to five days a week. Shut up, bro. We're supposed to be exercising every single day. A day without exercise is weird for a human. It literally makes you a suboptimal human. You should be doing a form of exercise every day. <laughs> The 
issue is that most guys who lift weights have set rest days and so they use that as an excuse to just be lazy and to not move at all. That's not how a rest day is supposed to be. A rest day literally just means you're not going to go to the gym to do you know, the next workout that you had planned, but you should still be doing about 20, 30 minutes of some kind of cardio. At the very least, just go for a walk. And I'm guilty of this, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm I'll be completely honest, literally just yesterday I had, I had a full rest day, I didn't even move, stayed in my room pretty much all day and it wasn't, it wasn't good, I wasn't really that happy. Today I woke up and went to my gymnastic ring spot, so I run there with my bag, so it's like a weighted run. I did gymnastic rings with my friend, here's a few clips. Let's do it, oh my god! <laughs> god damn, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Zero percent body fat! <laughs> I felt it slip when I went down, so I can't even hold it here. Yeah, 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 that is it. It was fantastic. I feel at least 50% happier than I did yesterday. Now, the happiness boost of exercise seems to be long and short term. So what that means is that when you're consistently exercising, it's like your baseline happiness slowly increases over the months and the years. But the huge boost of exercise to your happiness is like a short term four to six hours boost after you've done it. So imagine you go to exercise at 8 a.m. today till around 12, till around two. You've got like some extra endorphins and dopamine that's really spiked up, especially if you do exercise how I do it, which, you know, I try and do it in a social way. I invite friends to do it. We're, we're doing challenges. We're hitting some things that, you know, are kind of difficult. I'm smiling about it, but I know that, let's say in five hours time, it's not gonna be the thing that's really on my mind. So I'm not really gonna be still really, really happy about it. So there's a short-term boost, so it's fantastic to do every single day, and there's a long-term boost, and that's really what you wanna be building up. Nutrition's gonna take me a while to explain, but here is my full diet video. I really, really suggest you watch this. It's probably one of the most value-filled videos I've made. It's 45 minutes of me talking about diets, talking about nutrition, telling you the fact that Every video you've watched of, you know, fitness YouTubers, they're all fucking lying to you. You need to watch this video if you're into fitness, if you're into building an aesthetic body, if you're into lifting weights, you probably follow the guys who I'm talking about and they're gonna make you sick. They're really gonna make you sick. That type of diet that they talk about will make you unhappy. You should really, really watch this video. Click on it right now to watch it. Sunlight is a very important but understated part of physical health and how it relates to happiness. Sunlight makes us happy. We are creatures of the sun. And most people, especially in a country like this in the UK, do not get enough sun. I believe you can even make the statement that 100% of people are deficient in vitamin D because there's no point even saying, oh, 99.3%, you may as well literally just say, every single person that you've ever seen is deficient in vitamin D. So you can take the supplement. Here is one of the oldest videos I made on vitamin D. It's a really old video, but it's still valid. You can take the vitamin D supplement, but it would be better to get more natural sunlight. Now, that kind of means that you're gonna have to go outside more when it's sunny, and it will probably still be cold, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. You're just gonna have to experience the cold, but still also get the sun on you. Here's another clip of me doing gymnastic rings this morning where it was sunny and you can see that I'm shirtless. I'm just soaking up the vitamin D. Now, of course I'm hyped because I'm shirtless and I'm pumped, but I think another reason why we felt so good was because of how beautiful the sun felt on top of us, even though it was freezing cold. As long as the sun hits your skin, not so much your clothes, it needs to hit your skin, it needs to hit your neck, your the back of your head, your arms. The more skin that the sun can hit, the better. And you don't really need that much sun. I believe it's like 10, 15, 20 minutes of sun that you need per day. And even if, you know, even if it's cold. So make that attempt to go outside when it's sunny. Finally, sleep is something that many, many people struggle with. You're not sleeping long enough. 
0% of people who are watching this video aren't sleeping long enough. 0% of people worldwide are sleeping long enough. 0%. I don't, I've never met a single person who's sleeping long enough because how many hours of sleep do you need? Eight hours. You need to wake up at 6 a.m., right? What time do you go to bed? 10 p.m., you're a dumbass. Hours of sleep does not equal hours of bedtime. For some reason, everyone thinks that bedtime equals sleeping time that they need to wake up at six, so they'll go to sleep at 10 p.m. That's eight hours, oh, uh, I'm good at math, that's eight hours, I get eight hours of sleep. No, you fucking don't, what the fuck? You're telling me that the moment you close your eyes, you're fully asleep in REM sleep, and you stay asleep for eight hours, bullshit. Go and use a tracker, go and track your sleep right now, you're gonna see that you get less than, maybe less than six hours with that. Here's a few screenshots of my sleep. I have to be in bed for more than 10 hours, sometimes 11 hours to get a bit above eight hours of sleep. No one is sleeping long enough because you dumbasses keep using your phone just before you go to bed because YouTube and Twitter and Instagram is more important than your health and your happiness. When you're using any kind of screen before bed, that's what you're trading. You're trading your happiness and your well-being just so you can get the last few minutes of fucking dopamine. Have some respect for yourself. Stop that shit, stop prioritizing sleep and really, really think that the one way, the one easiest way to improve your sleep is to allocate a longer time to sleep. Stop fucking around with waking up early, going to sleep, whatever. You need a longer time of bedtime. If your bedtime is eight hours, you are not sleeping long enough. Your bedtime honestly needs to be about 10 hours at least. The fifth way to be happy is getting into a flow state. This is such a cool way to be happy. When we're in a flow state, it's like negative emotions don't exist. It, you feel so competent and so in, in the flow of things that all thoughts are gone. Now you've experienced the flow state before, but you're probably not too sure exactly how to get into it. I made a video on social flow. So how to get into the flow state in a social setting so that you're not overthinking, you're not anxious, you're not thinking about your insecurities. And instead you can't even hear the thoughts in your mind while you go and talk to people. It's like a superpower. When I talk to people, I, I, I know for a fact that they are not in social flow and they're, you know, they're, they're insecure and they're doing shit like this. And here I am with zero thoughts in my mind because I've trained myself to get into that. The short version of getting into the flow is that whatever activity you're doing needs to be rewarding and challenging at the right level for you to get into the flow. It can't feel too easy. It can't feel too hard. It can't feel unrewarding and it can't feel too rewarding. Most likely that's actually true because it caused too much anxiousness. You need to be right in that sweet spot. And that's where our optimum experience as humans is derived. And so you probably experience flow state in different activities to me. With me, it's always been talking and teaching people some kind of concept that puts me into a flow state. There is zero thoughts, zero activity. Not activity, but there is zero words in my brain right now. There is literally zero, I'm, I'm testing it right now. There is literally zero thoughts in my brain. Still. Still. Lit, what the fuck? There's li I'm, I haven't really fully tested it before, but there's... That is so weird. <laughs> it took a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to get to this point. I have established what puts me into a flow state and how sick is this, that this is my business. This is my daily activity. So why do you think I'm so happy all the time? Because making videos, I'm in a flow state. Going on to coaching calls with my students, I'm in a flow state. For at least three hours a day, I'm in a flow state. You need to find something that does this for you. And it probably will be different to me. This is what I did a few months ago. It is so worth your time to journal about this. And literally, here's the Here's the journal prompt, the actionable step. What puts me into a flow state? Do some research on it. Really try to understand exactly what a flow state is. Read some articles, watch some YouTube videos so you get an understanding. And then ask yourself that question. If you can find out the exact activities that you consistently get into a flow state with and then start putting those activities into your daily schedule and perhaps even make a business out of them, it's like you reach your ideal self, your ideal day so quickly. It, it's truly amazing. And there's still zero thoughts in my mind. The sixth way to be happy is to have a purpose. This purpose can be spiritual or religious, but if you aren't spiritual or religious, you must create your own purpose. Now, our purpose was always kind of set for us as, as young men, as 20 year old men, our purpose would have been to provide for and to protect our family and our children, our wives. We don't really have that type of life anymore. So a lot of people watching this are in their 20s, they're not married, they don't have kids, they don't have a clear set purpose. And a lot of people watching this are also not religious and not spiritual. If you're either of those, if you're religious or spiritual, you've already got your purpose planned for you, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. If you're not, you're left 
directionless. You have to take it on yourself to find and develop your own purpose. And I've got some advice for you. Your purpose should definitely be a self-transcending purpose. Self-transcending means above you, higher than you, more than you. It has to be something that's more than yourself. Now, a lot of people who don't have purposes, a lot of a lot of young guys who don't have a purpose, they're struggling to find it. It's far better to have a hedonistic purpose than to have no purpose at all. If you're really struggling with this idea of having a purpose, at least identify and establish that your purpose is your own self-improvement. That's kind of like a hedonistic purpose where it just means it's, it's all about your own growth, your own pleasure. That's at least better than not even establishing a purpose whatsoever. But having a self-transcending purpose is the best of all. So I want you to think right now, the purpose doesn't exactly need to be something that you are completely doing right now. So for example, you're studying engineering. Well, your life's purpose can be to what do engineers do? To do the thing that would help the community because you're gonna be the engineer who fixes the, the electrical stuff. I don't know, do you get what I mean? So my purpose is to help young men with their self-improvement. See how that's bigger than me? That means that more people rely on me because of this thought in my mind. And instantly that makes me happy because it gives me something to pursue that feels really, really worthwhile. And in this pursuit comes my own self-improvement, comes my own development. That's so important. If you don't feel like you've got a purpose right now, you should really take the time to journal about this. I've said this in one of my other videos about purpose. You cannot, the reason why you've not found your purpose is because you're not allowing your brain to think. You haven't spent enough time away from the screens. You've literally been watching YouTube videos whilst thinking, oh, I don't know my purpose, whilst watching the YouTube video, just mouth breathing. Oh, I don't know my purpose. You're not gonna be able to think straight when you're watching my video, when you're watching anything online. You wanna really think deep? What you've gotta do is turn everything off. Turn your computer off, turn your phone off, sit there with a piece of paper and a pen and literally just write that down. What is my purpose? What could my purpose be? What is a self-transcending purpose, a mission that will help humanity, that will help other people, that will help animals, that will help the environment, nature, the earth? which is bigger than me. What is something I can do? You must spend that time actively trying to answer this question. And finally, the seventh way to be happy is with your strengths. We all have different character strengths. Mine is discipline and positive thinking. What's yours? You must be able to say it as quickly as I just did. Your character strength doesn't need to be something that is innate to you that was genetic. It can be something that you've recently gotten good at. You must identify and get better at things. Happiness comes from progress. I, I always say this, progress creates happiness. If you're not progressing in something, if you're not getting stronger in something, you're losing. Now, because the word here is strengths, straight away, at least for me, my mindset went to, oh, weightlifting because you get stronger. Now, weightlifting can be a strength of yours, but not, not exactly. Strength in terms of you know progressive overload isn't exactly the same as strengths just in general. You want your character strengths to be something that you're either naturally or something that with practice are better than most people with. You need to be able to excel in something. That gives you so much pleasure. It drives your career forward, drives your relationships forward, gives you so much confidence. You must be able to excel at something, be good at something and get stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, weightlifting and hobbies like that can be it. But what I would say is that this should be more of a personality trait than the actual activity. So I wouldn't say it's weightlifting. I would say it's dedication, discipline, motivation. It's one of those, willpower. That's the one. And I want you to then think, okay, you know, I've said for me, mine is discipline and positive thinking. I keep that in my mind and that makes me feel so good that a strength of mine is my discipline. You can see by my face of how proud that makes me. That strength of mine is discipline. I want you to be able to say something like that. So take the time again right now, pause the video, journal about it. What is one of my personality strengths? So we've covered all seven ways to be happy. I want you to take the time again, final prompt, to pause the video and to journal and to ask yourself, which of the seven areas are you lacking in most? Which of the seven could you improve in the most? It's really worth the time to pursue that, to think, okay, uh, you know what? I feel kind of lonely right now, so relationships. And then you think, okay, Hamza said, that I can improve my relationships with this book, I'll give that a try. What I'll also do, I'll go and search about relationship advice on YouTube, on Reddit, I'll go on Coursera and see if there's a course there. Fantastic. If you have that type of mindset, I know you're gonna be happier in the next few weeks. I know you're gonna be successful in life. I want everyone watching this right now, 
Which of the seven areas are you lacking in? Go and actively spend some time researching, learning and improving that area. What could be more important than your own happiness? And that is what I try to help you with, with my self-improvement coaching. A lot of guys come to me with depression and addictions to porn and social media and video games and junk food. If you're feeling like your happiness could be increased and you understand that that's probably one of the best things you could do in life, I will help you with that. Every guy who comes to me starts off with depression, with addictions, and literally in just a few weeks, it's like we've eliminated most of it. And it's the, the transformation that you feel is so astounding that it's honestly one of the best investments you'll ever make in your life. Now, I don't want you to make a decision right now. All I want you to do is scroll down to the description and click on the self-improvement coaching link. Just click on the link, read the page, and then just see how you feel about that. Now, on that page, you can book a 15-minute call with me. So if you're interested in the coaching, you want to talk to me first and, you know, get the feel of it, you can use that link. Now, if you're not even interested in coaching and you just feel like talking to me and you want my help with self-improvement, go and use that link. Go and book that 15-minute call. We'll have a little chat. It's not just for the people who want to become my clients. I really enjoy it when people sign up to those 15-minute chats and we literally just talk about self-improvement. They ask me for my advice on something. So if you want like a free mini call with me, go to the self-improvement coaching link in the description right now click on it, book the call. If you found some value in this video and you want to see more videos from a somewhat unconventional small YouTuber, I talk about young men's self-improvement. Scroll down, click on the subscribe button, turn on the post notifications right now. You'll get a message for my next videos. I have an email newsletter. Every Sunday, you're going to get a lot of value for free. Go to the email newsletter link in the description right now. Just trust me, you're going to get so much value for it. It's completely free. I spent like two hours writing this email. It's about young men's self-improvement, relationships, and just becoming a man. Go to the newsletter link in the description right now. Sign up. A video has just popped up on screen. Self-improvement made me love life again. When you hit self-improvement like I do from all angles, you're going to be happy. You've noticed from this video that these seven ways to be happy is something that I cover in the way that I do self-improvement. So I highly recommend you watch this video if you want self-improvement to make you happier. Click on the video right now to watch it. Take care. Woo! I'm tired fam.